turbine impeller must be fixed with a special pencil like this so that the turbine does not rotate. Since we configure the compressor without connecting oil, the turbocharger is calibrated statically. We connect the vacuum to the vacuum actuator. After the turbocharger has been repaired in the turbo service, it needs to be calibrated. This is the final stage of the turbocharger repair. In a pneumatic vacuum type turbocharger, two settings are mainly present. This is the stop and rod. The stop adjusts the airflow through the turbocharger, the rod adjusts the pressure, negative vacuum pressure, at which the geometry of the turbocharger begins to open. In order to calibrate the turbocharger, you need to enter the turbocharger number into the database. Here we have already introduced it. Here's our turbocharger. Now we will look at the stop setting. In this case, the turbocharger, the focus on the turbocharger is configured. We can see it by the tolerance field. The setting is within the tolerance field. Now we will upset it and try to configure it again. It is necessary to adjust the turbocharger so that the stop must first be turned towards the lever. When setting it up, you need to unscrew it. During the setup, we turned on and off the vacuum in order to check the correctness of our setup. Whether the backlash is in the geometry was selected correctly when setting up. Next, we can see a graph according to which we can also adjust and understand how to properly configure the turbocharger. According to the diagram, we can observe that our turbocharger is configured. According to this graph, we can adjust the moment of time by vacuum, that is, the moment of vacuum at which the geometry begins to open. On Garrett turbines, this moment is mainly in the minus 0, 0,55 hundredths of a bar zone. In order to adjust or upset the turbine, there is a lock nut and a nut on the thrust, which can be adjusted, moved, shifted in the desired direction. Now we have somehow upset the rod, let's see what we get on the diagram. The offset of the opening moment, the beginning of the opening of the geometry shifted closer to minus 0.6 bars. In order to adjust, you need to twist the nut on the rod of the pneumatic actuator in the direction in which we need to shift. That is, we take it and tighten it. So, and it is preferably not too tight at first, then tighten. Because the setting can go away when you are tight. So, here we have set up, you can see that we have overdone it a little. You can move the setting back.
The green lines are our tolerance field, the red line is our graph. Well, we can see that we have configured the turbocharger. We also have a machine equipped with an electronic indicator. You can also see its readings on the monitor. The indicator is needed in order to check the operation of the vacuum actuator. To do this, we need to put the turbine in an appropriate way so that we can put an indicator, a magnetic indicator to the thrust. According to the electronic indicator, we can evaluate the operation of the vacuum actuator itself. To do this, there are corresponding tables that indicate which vacuum value we can get in millimeters the corresponding movement of the actuator. To do this, we can reset, we can see the total stroke. That is, in this case, we see that the stroke of the vacuum actuator is 13 and 3 millimeters. We can also create the necessary vacuum pressure. Well, for the corresponding vacuum pressure, we see how the position of the actuator changes in millimeters. Our setup was at a tolerance of 1%. Usually this percentage is used to adjust the machine, but in order to show the accuracy of the machine, we adjusted it to 1%. For work, an acceptable percentage is 3. Now we will restart and see how accurately we have calibrated. In practice, a tolerance of 3% is applied. Here we can see a tolerance of 3%. In this case, the calibration of the turbocharger with a vacuum actuator is over. Our turbocharger is fully calibrated in the required tolerance field. The complete set of the machine includes adapters with centering bushings, that is, each bushing according to the diameter of the turbine inlet in order to center the adapter, there are such aluminum inserts bushings. A sleeve is placed, an elastic band is placed. Also here is a large and also a small adapter for smaller turbines. On our machine it is possible to check turbines with an electronic actuator. To do this, it is enough to know the number of the electronic actuator. It is necessary to have such an ATP-1000 device that works together with the machine. That is, a turbine with an electric actuator can be fully configured on this machine only with the appropriate device. We fix the turbine impeller. Let's start from the beginning. There is a testing and programming menu. In the tester tab, we can check the actuator, the motor, the actuator position sensor. 009483. A message is displayed that you need a red-yellow wire, that is, red-yellow. You can enable manual test and auto-test. 
In order to check the turbocharger at the stand, it is necessary to connect our ATP-1000 device to the computer with a USB cord. In this case, the device restarts and the actuator must be selected again. The actuator is connected, we can see it on the PC, that is, the icon corresponding to the device connected to the computer. You also need to change the pneumatic button tab to the electro button. When the ATP-1000 device is connected, the ATP-1000 OK icon is written here. So our actuator connected to the device, the device connected to the computer. ATB-1000 OK. Now we can choose our turbo from the database. Also in the tests tab here we can see whether the position of the actuator corresponds to 80%, took the default percentage of 80%. With this percentage, the position of the actuator, the airflow through the turbocharger must correspond to the value of the test plan. We can check it out. So, in order to check, we need to disconnect the device from the computer, set 80% and run the test. We can see that the turbocharger meets the test plan. Perhaps the only way to somehow adjust the turbocharger here is to have backlash on the bolts once and you can squeeze out the compressor housing, release the mount and adjust our necessary consumption a little in this way. But, as practice has shown, this is a rather narrow window of opportunity. It can be adjusted within fairly small, small limits. So on, we can also plot graphs and see if our turbocharger meets the test plan. To do this, you need to connect the device to a computer. Select our actuator, press the start. We can see that our turbocharger meets the test plan. Our machine has the function of checking the valve N75. Everyone knows about this valve. Very often it happens that you buy a new valve from the store, but the car does not go on it. Well, we, in particular, faced this. We also have our own service station. We knew for sure that there were problems in the valve, it was changed to a new one, but the car still did not go. The reason for this was a fake, a Chinese fake of the real firm Pierberg, only a Chinese fake. Externally, they are absolutely no different in any way. Even casting, there are different remnants from casting. Everything is so much the same that it is simply impossible to distinguish one from the other without checking. In order to check, we have a cable like this, where there are several connectors and universal connectors in order to connect our 75th. The machine also has a connector for this side cable. Turn on the valve, connect our N75. We connect the tubes to the valve, the vacuum and the vacuum outlet. There is also a vacuum in the machine, a vacuum outlet. We disconnect these tubes, connect the vacuum tube to the name vacuum, the vacuum outlet to the vacuum outlet. We select our valve in the database, well, it's already here. 
click start the test and it is necessary to close the tube. Now, if we release of the tube, we see that the characteristic goes away. That is, the tube should be closed by this. The green lines are our admission field. The red line is a characteristic of our valve N75. So, for clarity, the tube can be closed in this way. You can also connect some kind of pneumo actuator to our tube. Just like that, click run the test. We can see how the rod began to move smoothly. So, now let's check the non-working N75, let's see how it works. In this case, we can see that with a given borehole, the characteristic of the vacuum depth does not reach the required level, that is, the operating vacuum pressure in the car is about 0.7 to 0.8 minus 0.8 kilograms. In this case, we see that our non-working N75 is more than 0.45, 0.45 can no longer give. That is, accordingly, he cannot properly control the vacuum actuator.